Oh, it says rotate your phone, you can't turn your phone while we... It's okay, it's okay. Okay, wait. <laughs> Hang on it. It says lies. Is it? Well, welcome everybody. I hope I'm live. If you, if I am live, just stick it in the comments. Uh, we're still having a few technical problems, but we think we've got there now with uh, the live video. Uh, any comments coming up yet, Jane? Well, uh, yeah, but it, it's upside down. I can see people from coming in from the side. It's fine. You. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. I miss you. Then. It's because you're coming in. From the other side, Rachel Slings is watching. Hi, Rage and Rosemary's watching, and Richard cool. Davis is watching. Excellent. Well, oh, well, you're upside down. To Rachel says you're upside down. Oh my word! <laughs> so sums us up pretty much at the minute. Oh. Bear with. Okay, is that better that way round? Oh, you're sideways, yeah. No, when well, you're not now, obviously. Okay. I'll right. Let's. It. It. Okay. Oh, not easy. Okay, so we're hopefully that's better now for us uh, and on the right way round. Uh, obviously, Facebook have changed the settings on how they do live and we can only do it it's okay now. Uh, this way round. We can't do landscape as we used to unless I can find a way around it. But it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because it's <laughs> still same, same uh, that it always has been. Welcome to Lockdown Cooking at Home with myself, Red Redfern. Behind the camera is my lovely wife, Jane. Today we're doing a lovely fillet of pork with a peppercorn sauce with a bit of brandy through it and also some hand crushed parsley potatoes. It's a really easy dish to do today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed what we did on Monday. There's been lots of pictures coming in for the pill pill and it looks like um, uh, you all had a good go at it and the mix turned out really well for you. Anyway, I'm just going to crack on. Jane's going to say a few hellos and then we'll get going. Oh, wish me luck on this. I've missed so many people. Uh, Richard <laughs> Davies says your wine would have run out your glass. I quite like that. Uh, Debbie Brown. Hi, Debbie. Hope everything's okay at your end, honey. Uh, your dad's in the house. Mark Shaw's watching. Ian Gibbons is watching. Uh, obviously, Rach is watching. Um, if I've missed you, sorry. We're having uh, Facebook, a, a guess. Maybe we're just too popular and they don't like it. I think the trouble with Facebook is they like to change things around so people don't get very complacent. Anyway, uh, today's wine, guys, we're on the uh, Condoro again. Okay, this is from Val de Peñas area, which is halfway between Granada and um, Madrid. I've had it on here before. This is the 13%, so not quite as strong as the one we had on Monday. Okay, so this is a Trempanillo. I'm going to crack this one open. And then we're going to start with the pork. Louise Thornton's watching. And hola, hola. Hola. Paul Gilby's watching. Ian I Duff. Hear, Ian Duff's watching from Washington. Yes. Hi, I Jackie. Hear. Jackie Gibbons is watching. Quick shout out to their pill pill today. It looked amazing. Yeah, it looked very good. So nice. Um, we're not inspiring. Well, we are inspiring people, but it's, everyone's getting your cook on. It's great. <laughs> uh, my brother's in the house. Simon, dear, love you, miss you. Standard. So I put a little video. I took I took a little trip out today. I went to the was very brave and I went to the supermarket. I didn't see all a soul own. all the way Jeez, down the hill. All. So it was quite nice actually. Right then, let's just run through the ingredients we've got on today. Then uh, we've got a nice piece of fillet of pork. We've got some potatoes, a bit of brandy, olive oil, cream, pepper. Uh, not normal pepper and uh, some cracked black pepper here. I've got a little bit of uh, Dijon mustard, uh, salt, pepper, salt and, pe uh, salt and mixed herbs, some Worcestershire sauce, onion, bit of garlic, parsley, and a little bit of um, vegetable stock. Vegetable stock. <clears throat> okay, so there's all the ingredients. Charan Jot Singh's watching. Charan, Charan Jo, I don't know how you say that. CJ. Sorry. CJ. No, it's not CJ, is it? Charan Jo. Anyway, some of the menus and the food you put up is yeah. so, oh, looks so good. All the way from Japan he is. He's uh, one of my buddies online. Uh, some of the food you do, mate, is fantastic. It really is. Uh, keep them coming. 
I had to get your, your wife on a guest spot, I think. That would be something. really nice. She really does some good. really awesome. smart stuff, doesn't she? Uh, Shirley Nicholas is watching. And while Shirley's on, I just want to say, <laughs> right, let's. We, the medal for last week's food has yeah. to go to her husband who made the most delicious-looking crisp, crisp sandwich you've ever seen. Yeah. Okay, Fantastic. hands down, Wazza, it looked the dog's bees mate honest to god and you inspired me because it made me want one and that's the whole idea of the show it's got to be butter on the bread mind okay so uh, as always the thing that takes the longest to cook goes on first uh, we're going to do the potatoes now as you can see i've got a few potatoes the skins are on what we're going to do is just going to wash these in the skin and then get them onto the boil okay <clears throat> barb's in the house barb's watching got quite a nice few people um watching today uh, it is CJ, right, so I can call him that from now on, okay. How did you get on it, uh, Mercadonna, Barb? I know you were nervous. All right, there was a lady in Mercadonna today, <laughs> lover, who was clearly out for some fresh air or a different place because she walked around Mercadonna all the time I was there with nothing in her basket. So, fair play to her. Better to have nothing in your basket than nothing on. This is true, but she was, oh, I don't know. I thought, I don't even know what you're doing here, Mrs. Okay, anyway. so we've given the potatoes a quick wash. Just cut them down to size, okay, because these are going to get crushed down. Just cut them into half. It's a super easy dish to do, and everybody will love it. And at this stage, okay, all we're going to put into this is some salt. Roughly speaking, you want around about a teaspoon and a half of salt. Potatoes take a little bit more salt, okay, than uh, other dishes because it really does absorb uh, the salt. Um, remember, I, I try and give you, I've got some boiled water here just so it comes up to the boil quicker. Do you know we've got over 1,850 members now? <clears throat> yeah, keep sharing, guys. Um, keep telling your friends about it. And it's Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hump day. So uh, one of the little tips I can give you, because uh, we've got potatoes on, which is the first time we've done the potatoes, is if you find you do anything that's really salty, okay, you've put too much salt in and you want to try and draw some of the salt out of it, whether it's a soup, or a sauce or a curry anything like that a really good tip is to put a raw potato into it and cook it with the raw potato in it and then you can take your potato out before you serve it what the potato draw in salt okay so if you put a potato into something that's a little bit salty okay it will draw out a lot of the salt that's in the mix already okay mm, top, top tip. tip top tip from we, mr we like redburn we do I'm going to say that carefully. Look at yes. this pork, guys. Um, this is Solomio in um <clears throat> Solomio is fillet. Okay. 3.49, that is. Uh, so, so cheap over here. So that um, works out. It's 6.25 a kilo for fresh uh, pork over here. I actually had a look at the frozen, because the frozen are a little bit bigger sometimes, but it was actually cheaper to buy fresh no pork way. fillet than frozen. How does that work out? I have no yeah. idea. That's a bit strange. So what we're going to do with the fillet then, the same as with the chicken really, see all these white sinews on here, okay, we want to take these off because this, when they cook, not only do they contract, okay, but they also go very, very gristly and we don't want that, we want to take these off. So if you've got a small knife, okay, if you just go underneath the gristle like this and angle it out a little bit, Okay, and then move it. It should come away with very little of the meat on it. Okay, so we're going to take this all off here. We're not using these, so discard them. How's everyone doing today? The weather here is absolutely yeah, lovely divine. day today. We've been in the garden again today. We've been. I've been, we've been, I've been streaming and gardening streaming and, been and making... getting ready for hopefully opening shortly. The Spanish government are talking about relaxing things very, very shortly. So uh, we're ready to open Hidden Valley for you guys. Uh, on a pork fillet then, you've got your main fillet down here. All fillets are the same, by the way. You've got your main fillet down here and you've got a sinew that runs all the way down the side here, look. Okay, you can either take this all out, which I'm going to do. 
Hi, Marion. Marion Litchfield's watching. Oh, hi, Marion. Marion's a great cook. Yes, yeah, she is. Very good. Yeah, okay, so take all of this out here. Now, as you can see, you've got quite a bit left over there. If you wanted to, you can strip, strip that down again and use the meat off it, or you can use it uh, and put it to a side uh, for the dog, fry it up for the dog, or for the uh, have it as mince. So we're after a really nice clean piece of meat so that when we fry it off, it's not going to shrink back Natalie White's watching. Natalie, say congratulations to Melissa on her that beautiful baby she's had. I saw. Uh, okay, so we've got a nice piece of pork fillet. This will do two people. So we're going to start at the small end, which is the tail. Now, if you if you're if you've got a fillet and you're looking for a Chateau Briand, then it will be this area here, this part here. Okay, most of the steaks all come from this part here. So from the tail end, we want some nice slices. So the, I'm angling my uh, knife away slightly. Okay. And you want to have them they roughly quite, they about thick, half an they? inch thick, yeah. We haven't had pork for a long time. We haven't though. actually, no. So I'm looking forward to this today. We could go al fresco. We could go al fresco. Nice glass of wine. Talk, oh, talking of wine. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, talking of wine. Darren Phillips says hi. Hey, Darren. <clears throat> All the way from Australia. He's a Brit living over in Australia, a bit like us living in Spain. That's not a very good one. Oh no. Right, just hang on one second. Ah. James is talking to people. The gas Te is running out. The gas has run out. Technical issues here. Oh my days. It's all going wrong this week, isn't it? Dear me. I don't know. Fail to prepare, Richard. Prepare to fail. Do I sound like your dad? Andrew Northcourt. He's going to need a drink in a minute, Andrew, because he's just run out of gas. That's the thing here, we don't have um, on the mains gas, we're all on bottles here. So, yes, definitely Andrew is going to need more wine. Yeah, pork, in, I know, it is lovely, isn't it, Ian? Pork in Spain's much nicer than in the UK, it is. And it's quite a lot cheaper, but then I guess we pay for that because we can't afford the lamb. Just to show that it is live. Yeah, we've run out of gas. We've no, run out of gas. You've let, oh, you've let the dog in now. Uh, you let the dogs in. I don't know, right? Okay, we're off and running again. Woo! The chef's here, Claire. He had to run out because we ran out of gas. <laughs> Finn, please move. Finn, move. Come here then. Let me just sort the dog out. Go this on. is going well, isn't it? Go on. Good boy. Oh, dear me. All right, have a drink, love. I'm I'll have a drink in a minute. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do then, we're going to fry these off straight away now in a bit of olive oil. So a bit of olive oil onto the bottom of the pan. I'm also going to put a little bit of salt just over the bottom, just a sprinkle. And where is <clears throat> Christine Hamilton's watching, she's got her ingredients ready, so Excellent. she'll be quite pleased that it's not going too fast. Cheers everyone. We've got potatoes on, that's good. So into the pan then, just going to pop the pork fillets and what we're doing is we want to seal these off both sides and have a bit of colour. Lovely. Then we're going to put 
a little bit of sprinkle of salt over the top of these as well and then a sprinkle of black pepper all over the top like Christine so. was glad the gas gas ran out we, just for you Christine <laughs> just for you love <laughs> Okay, then the next thing to get ready in, we're going to get ready is an onion. Okay, uh, whilst I'm at, uh, uh, just before I do the onion, I'm just going to show you guys um, the very first video we did. We did uh, how to sharpen a knife. My knife needs sharpening a bit because it's a little bit blunt, so I'm just going to show you. You always put an edge on a knife, okay, with a steel. And the way you do that is you hold a steel in your hand, not in a grip like this, okay, you put your thumb over the top like this. This part here is called a hand guard, okay, and that is to guard your hand. You don't, the reason you don't hold it like this is because if you slip, okay, you will then cut your uh, thumb knuckle. If you hold it over the top like don't this, want that. No. okay, if you slip, you it miss. It goes down. Okay. okay, so you put an edge on both sides. Seems ages since you did this in one of the first. The very first one. Was it the first? Yeah. Yeah. It seems a long time ago now. We've been going a couple of weeks I'm, now, haven't we? We've been going a long time now. Mm -hmm. Of course, look. guys. If we ever open, I'm not sure we'll be able to do this. <clears throat> we will be doing it at some point. It might not be. It won't be doing it probably uh, three times a week. We might drop down to once or twice a week, mm. uh, and we might change the name from lockdown cooking at home to something else. But we are going to be here. We're not going away. So uh, peel up an onion, remember top to tail, all the way round, for those of you that popped over to the YouTube channel and liked the videos, thanks very much, sharing's caring, mm. okay then, Take the top and the bottom of the onion, we then cut it in half and we want some nice fine dice. Okay, so from the top, have the top closest to you and the tail away from you, slice it down over the top, all the way across. That's a good idea, Andrew Northcott said we should have a break free barbecue after lockdown. Yes. Oh, that would be so nice. I've told you, Andrew, we're having a party up here. I'm opening up Hidden Valley for anybody that's ever watched us on here. And I guess you'd have to be number one, I suppose. And who else is going to open all the wine for us? <laughs> and then once you've got down to the last bit, turn it over and slice it down. We don't want to be wasting anything. Quick check on the pork. Okay, see how it's all going white around the edges here. Okay, that means it's cooked on the other side. Turn those over, lovely. Finish off on here then. So one whole onion. Is this to go in the sauce? This is going to be part of the sauce, yeah. Very nice. Okay, once those are sealed on both sides, we then transfer this pork into a container. And then we're going to put in the onions. The onions, yes. Sorry, straight into it. Right, so just quick clean down whilst I'm at it. 
I see, Christine, you've been making some of the cocktails, haven't you? I noticed a few of you have. I don't know, actually. I suppose if anybody wants any particular cocktails this weekend, uh, put them on here for Jamie to uh, see. Yeah, I'm also, to, by tonight, the menus for next week will be up there. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for some nice menus uh, for you? next one, next uh, next week. Yeah. Well, we'd like to try and get outside, wouldn't we? We want to try and get outside. We are going to try. Yeah, stuff. we're going to try and do something outside next week if this weather stays. I'm not sure how long it's here for. Lovely. Right then. Cheers, everybody. James Smith is watching. Don't know who that is. You James Smith? Yeah, James. Yeah, from Clifton. Oh, right, okay. Clifton or Clibbury? Clifton. Okay. All right then, so getting mm. the rest of the bits and pieces together. This recipe Red used to do when we had a pub. Now, with the peppercorns, I'm just going to use um, black peppercorns because I haven't got any soft green peppercorns. If you've got the soft green peppercorns in a jar, they're better for a peppercorn sauce. Okay, but uh, I'm just going to use some cracked black pepper and some ground pepper. Okay. Uh, Melanie Williams says cheers. Alison Nichols, hi, hi, Alison. Hello. Okay, From the coast, yeah. We miss so many people. By now, we've normally had so many of um, repeat people for this time of year and of course because Hidden Valley is still closed and you know I mean if any anywhere you want to go talk about social distancing our tents are all 50 meters apart yeah so you could literally not see anyone and we're thinking about if if and when we can open and just to keep this social distancing thing going thinking about doing breakfast baskets outside the tent and see how that works instead of everyone coming into the breakfast room okay so I also want to put in a clove of garlic into the mix remember when we did the pill pill we didn't crush it we just sliced it well today we're going to crush it okay so you lay lay your uh, knife over the top of it give it a bang to crush it down okay and just Jan Jeffries says hi. Hi Jan. This looks good. It is. It's so so tasty. Uh, pepper sauce is my probably my favourite sauce of all time. To be honest, red does some lovely sauces, but the peppercorn sauce is the nicest one. Okay, there. so we get that in there. We're also going to add to the mix here some mixed herbs. Sprinkle of mixed herbs. Right. So we're also going to put in a quarter of a stock cube. Sprinkle all already. Mm, good old stock cubes. Okay, <laughs> good old stock cubes, eh? Yeah, you like that idea, Barb? Yeah, we're thinking maybe that's what we should do for just for the first instance, you know, and you know, keep it. A little bit of parsley. And give everyone a breakfast basket. Okay, we're also going to put in some cracked black pepper. Again, with the pe with the pepper, this is a peppercorn sauce, so you want to have. A good amount of pepper into it. Uh, yes, it is, is this a creamy peppercorn yes, sauce? Yes, it is. A yes, creamy. it is. And also some ground pepper into it. Don't forget, you can watch this back, guys. Also, want to put into this then a splash of Liam Perrings. Uh, Lorna Black's watching. Hi, Lorna. Hi, Lorna. Uh, Liz Wright's watch. Liz Wright, what? Uh, half, watching. Half a taste teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Give all that a good old stir. Now I'm going to be using a bit of brandy. You don't have to use brandy. You can use white wine. You can use a bit of whiskey. You can use a bit of rum. Okay, what I want to do is I want to take up all of the goodness that's on the bottom of here now. Okay. Shit, you should have told me you were going to do that. Bloody hell, that sorted your eyebrows out. And mine. Okay, Jesus. and then you put into that 
we're, we're going to put in here around about 250 millilitres of double cream. And give all that a good old stir. Yes, Barb, it was funny that, wasn't it? I think he thought that was quite funny himself, actually. Trying to set us all on fire. <laughs> okay, then. The pork fillets you put back into the sauce, like so. Andy Taylor. Hi, Andy. Andy Taylor's watching. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Barb thinks that's highly amusing. <laughs> if you've got any juice or anything, that all goes in as well because we want all that. This is what it's all about. As much goodness as possible. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to this because it's a little bit thick for what I want. Is this cook? Is that cooking cream from Mercadon yeah, Red? It's cook, yeah, it's Cosina. Cosina. Yes, it is. Uh, Melanie Williams is asking. Yes, yeah, it don't is. use the uh, the Montalo Natter because that will split. Yeah. Don't forget, we've only got Mercadon here, so every single thing that Red particular pretty much is from Mercadona, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've only got that, so we haven't got any other stores. We can't shop around. Not that we're allowed anyway. There you are. I don't know what day lockdown are we on. Something like day 38 or something, silly. Uh, we're, we're halfway through week six. So oh. 35, 36, 37, 38. Yeah, gosh. Or well, even 39. So once it's come up to the boil, you want to give it a quick taste. Of course, in about, apparently in about a week or two weeks' time, we're going to be allowed out for a one kilometre walk. And if we're still doing this, there's going to be a queue at the gate. Mm. Day 39, Andrew says. Yeah, it feels like 139, doesn't it, Andrew? Okay, I've given that a quick taste. I need a little bit more salt in it. Not much, just a little sprinkle. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to put that to one side. How Why? are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing on time. Just checking the potatoes. So just put a fork in to see if they're soft. These aren't far off. So this doesn't take that long, really, does it's it? It's a really, really quick, quick. and easy yeah. uh, dish to do. It's a, it's a good it, one. It'll take, roughly speaking, um, for the sauce now to... Uh, cook the pork through. Don't forget with the pork fillets, we seared them off first. They're only going to take about five minutes in here. If it starts getting too thick, just add a little bit of water to it. Again, it's a lovely dish to do because it's all in one pan. We like this. Yeah, we like one pan stuff. I particularly do because I wash up. Keep down on the on the washing up. Okay, let's just move this over here. Now, I said that it's parsley potatoes. That's what I wanted. I couldn't get any parsley in Mercadona, so I'm going to substitute it with some chives. Is there anything else you could substitute? Say you couldn't get parsley yeah. or chives, um, what it, would be? I mean, you could use coriander, I suppose, but it's quite a strong mm. flavour, coriander. Um, mixed herbs? Mixed herbs would be fine, but um, using uh, chives or parsley, it's the green I'm after really more than anything, okay? So I'm just gonna chop these uh, chives up. I'm going to have a 10 course meal, Jackie, when you finally get to a slough. No, we're not. <laughs> Who's that? No, we're not. <laughs> I'm going to open some crisps and put some bread and butter out. That's right. <laughs> we're going to watch Wazza make us all a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, mint. Yeah, good shout, Marion. Mint. Yeah, mint will go yeah. through it as well. Yeah, um, yeah. for your potatoes. Nice, good. Yeah, of course. 
Yeah, minted potatoes. Oh, minted potatoes. potatoes are lovely. Okay, so... We're going to get that to one side like this. So I'm just going to test one of the fillets. Okay, we're still pink, so that's not ready. Now there is a bit of a mixed conception with pork, um, especially here in Spain. Uh, they do serve it pink. Um, they do say it should be cooked all the way through. Some places don't actually. Um, I myself personally, I like to cook my pork all the way through. Um, it's really only uh, chicken that you have to cook all the way through because of the diseases that are in chickens. Pork, it's a, more of a preference thing than anything else. We're gonna have a drink, honey. Yeah, I'll have a drink. I just wanna get this. Uh... <clears throat> I'm having a dry week this week, guys. I'll let you know how that works out. Can I just say I'm not? <laughs> I might have a dry day. That's the trouble with this lockdown. You could just keep drinking, couldn't you? And just, we're all gonna be so, un well, not unhealthy, but, oh. If anyone's got any questions whilst this is just cooking out, uh, please uh, just put them in the comments underneath. Okay, what we're gonna do now then, we're gonna just test the, potatoes once more okay they're ready so we drain these off now how I do these okay is I usually I leave the lid on okay put a cloth over the top with these take the lid off so it's just over the over the so it's not making a seal and then put a cloth over the top and hold the side the two handles at the side and then you can just pour it away, <clears throat> like so, okay? And does that save on a colander? Saves on a colander. So to this then, we're gonna put in... Uh, These are nice, it's a little bit different from mash, so it's just... Uh, a good portion of butter, uh, not butter, sorry, of milk. And then we're gonna put a good lob of butter into it. Gosh, that's a lot. That's like quarter of a block, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then what you do is you get a fork. If you haven't got a fork, don't worry. If you've got a masher like this sort, okay, you can use that. You can't use a masher like that though, mm -hmm. but you can use a masher like that. Because what we're after doing is we're after crushing rather than mashing, okay? So with your fork, just move it through the potato. Okay, mixing in the butter and the milk. Oh, mixing in all that badness that yeah. looks so good. <laughs> Everything that's bad for you tastes so good. Oh, okay, Applebee's on. Hi from Doncaster. Hi, honey, how are you? Yeah, how's Sunny Askin? That's where I'm from, that's Kay. An old pal of mine. Okay, so look, it's almost like mash, but it's crushed. And it's taken, how long's that taken to do that? Okay, two minutes. Two minutes. We're then gonna put in either your parsley or mixed chives. Like so. And give that a good, not a good mix, because you wanna keep it quite coarse. sunny in Asken as well. Nice and sunny here too today. Amen to that. We've had some shocking weather. We've had some shocking weather. Okay, so we'll test one more piece just to see how we're getting on. See, there's quite a lot in there, so that would do a few people, wouldn't this it? This will do two people. Two? Two people, yeah. 
Okay, so we're ready, look. Okay. Nicely cooked through. Looks nice and soft, that. Yeah, it is. Okay, now as you can see, I've got a form here. You don't have to use a form, obviously, you can use whatever you like. Uh, but the mashed potato. Susie Wallace, hi Susie. Hi Susie. Degrees in London. In London. Mike Longmore. Hi, Mike. We've got quite a few people in today. Nice. Mike Longmore from Newbridge. Mm. Very good family friends. One of uh, one of the pieces of chives. What I like to do is just cut it in half. Look. Oh, he said. And if you push it into the side of potato they just stick there oh he said are you sure yeah it normally does just as a bit of decoration like so okay and then we're going to put around about three or four I'm do with that shadow. okay we'll put four pieces of the pork just onto the side here, like so. Nice bit of the sauce all over the top. Wow, smells divine. Okay, and then. Okay. I'm going to try to ring you then. Gosh, oh. I don't know. Go away. And then a nice sprinkle. Don't forget your other garnish. <clears throat> of uh, parsley over the top. Now I've got here a little piece of red peppercorn from our tree. We've got okay. a false peppercorn a false tree peppercorn outside, tree. and it's, Just it's over the top really there. pretty. And they are actually peppercorns. If you crush them, they taste and smell like pepper. Terry Dorgan's in the house. Hey, Terry. Yeah, we've not unfrozen. Somebody tried to call us. How very dare they? <laughs> okay, so there you have it, guys. Uh, this is a pork fillet with a peppercorn sauce and a hand-crushed parsley or chive potato on the side. I think you'll really enjoy this one. It's a lovely dish to have. It goes down super well when we do it here. You can actually substitute the pork out with chicken. If you wanted to do the same with chicken, that would work fine, okay? So either of those works fine. I think it'll go down well wherever you do it. Anyway, that's it for us. I'll be putting up the menus for next week after we've done this. Uh, Jamie as well, I'll put up a post for uh, some suggestions for cocktails as well later today for Jamie on Saturday. On Friday, do not miss Friday for the whole cauliflower cheese with bake, crispy bacon bits. It is amazing. Super easy to do and I'll also run through the um, Waldorf salad as well at the same time for that that we missed from last week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching uh, Lockdown Cooking at Home with myself, Red Redfern. Behind the camera is Jane Redfern. If you're watching this on YouTube, just underneath this video, there is a thumb like this. Click the like on it. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please pop over there and subscribe as well. It'll help us grow this. Anyway, that's it from me. Jane, have you got anything more? Um, only Kay Appleby said, Yorkshire puds, please. So your Red's gonna go through the um, mix, um, Kay, with you, um, Friday uh, I, maybe? Friday, I might Possibly get time Friday, Friday. Um, because obviously he can't cook them because we haven't got the, the we're limited time, So, but he will make the batter with you. Yeah. So, and then you can't go wrong, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in to watch. We'll speak to you on Friday. Thanks, Bye for guys. now. Thanks, guys. Bye.